So we're in internet marketing. Uh, we started the company in 2009. Um, it was bootstrapped, you know, a couple partners put in, you know, 30,000 bucks each. And uh, um, we started from, from nothing and uh, built ourselves gradually over the years to the point where we're now over a hundred employees, just over a hundred. And um, you know, we, uh, we've been growing every year since 2009. What about a year and a half ago or so now we had we had been at a point where we felt like uh, we were in an inflection point in our business where we had, um, you know, close to 100 people at that time. And uh, we were all virtual. That's the other point I should make that mm -hmm. we're a virtual company. Um, and uh, it, it just became harder and harder to manage a large organization virtually to get the most out of people virtually to to uh, make sure that people were producing uh as much as they could be and you know getting the most out of our employees um and it was also just a point where we needed a lot more structure we we couldn't really operate like a uh, uh i guess a loosey-goosey entrepreneurial bootstrap company anymore we had uh, there were too many people and and uh to to execute that strategy effectively so it was just the right time and and uh yeah Well, when we started working together, I really felt like I still had my hands too much in the details. That's the first thing. Felt like that I couldn't take a month off and, and without the company falling apart. We had got, we had the first two thirds of our lives, we had been uh, very much a low hanging fruit company, get, grab the easiest, fastest revenue, uh, think very much what's in front of you. Um, we hadn't really built a lot of technology. We hadn't really focused on long-term initiatives that involved investments. Um, you know, things that we did always involved, how do we get the quickest, easiest buck the fastest? And mm -hmm. uh, we, were just, we just ran up against a, a point where that wasn't working as well anymore. We had gotten so low. We had scooped up all the low-hanging fruit um, and we needed to be able to complete some long-term objectives. So, mm -hmm. you know, those, that's the second thing that really drove me to wanting to do to get a coach was that I knew we needed to do a much better job with long-term planning and long-term initiatives. And we were not set up to do that. My life has gotten so much better. First of all, I mean, uh, my, I have a lot less stress. I have a lot more trust in my team and my executives. Um, uh, so that, you know, that's the key to not having as much stress. Um, and, uh, you know, I have people that we've really developed with your guys' help, like Amanda, um, like Simone, um, like Greg, that have really stepped up over the last year, developed extraordinarily and, and uh, uh, become really trustworthy um, assets that I don't feel the need to be checking up on as frequently, digging into as frequently, giving detailed instruction as frequently. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I can tell you with certainty, just looking at our NPS score improvements, our company, you know, company NPS scores over time, that it's been a major, a major win for us in people's uh, work-life balance or the feeling that they have about their work-life balance, I should say, and also about their company culture and how much the company, they feel like the company cares about them, uh, communicates with them. You know, we've gotten a lot of marks recently that, that people are impressed with how uh, and how communicative we are, um, how much we clearly care about our people and and care about what they're up to um so a lot of that has to do with the the processes we've built in mm -hmm. place so yeah i mean our team our team is really happy i don't just mean our executive team that you worked with directly they're they're all much happier but our entire company is is happier it's it's been also uh, fantastic just this last week and a half ago when we were in New York together, um, we were, you know, we started with our 10 year and then our, our three hag and then, and then uh, we revisited our one hag and made sure that that was still aligned. And our priorities for the last at least two quarters, if not three quarters, have been all rolling up beautifully to our one and three year. So it's, it's a very reassuring feeling for people, I think, to know that we're uh, working and moving big picture long-term projects along. 
our rhythm is uh, pretty straightforward now. It, you know, ev every department has an L10, which is, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. And then that rolls into our executive L10, which is all of those are weekly. Uh, we also have huddles. Each department has huddles uh, at least twice a week. Um, mm -hmm. And those are short calls. And um, we've managed to incorporate all of these into Asana make, uh, in our, in our uh, workflow, I guess you could say, where that um, when things need to roll up, they roll up and they show up as issues in, the Asana, in, in Asana on the agenda for the L10s. Um, they get sorted out or they get follow-ups that are right in Asana. So nothing ever gets lost. Things are rolling up well. Um, and uh, on top of those calls, you know, there will also be the, the unscheduled that's, you know, out of rhythm calls that we schedule for more detailed dives into specific priorities that need it. Um, but, you know, those types of calls are usually scheduled off of the L10s or routine calls. So um, it's all working very nicely, I'd say. On the first side of that, I would say that if you're wondering, you know, is it worth the cost? you know, evaluate what you could be accomplishing, I guess. What are the projects for us? Or I'll tell you the way I looked at it. For us, I knew we weren't getting what we wanted to out of long-term projects. We were skipping around too much. Um, we couldn't stay in line and focused and work towards a big goal and build on top of it. Um, and so, you know, that is how companies get their most value, their most potential. That's how you build something that, that has good exit potential. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I would look at, I would look, I would, I would tell a company that's looking at whether it's worth the cost to, to try to imagine what might be possible if you guys, if, if you guys could really stay tuned in and focused and working together on, on a long-term shared goal. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. And, you know, and then on the side of what do you have to be ready for? I think you know, it's hard to know exactly how it is with everybody, but I certainly was concerned at the very beginning and making sure everybody had buy-in. And thankfully for us, you know, people bought in pretty quickly and got on board pretty much at the first session. So, um, and that's a lot to, you know, how good you guys are, what you do. So, but, uh, you know, you want to make sure that your team is bought in ahead of time. I did have conversations with everybody on my executive team about bringing about this decision and made it a joint decision. I didn't put my foot down and say, this is what we're doing no matter what. I made it a discussion. Uh, and I think that was important. Um, and then, you know, most importantly, though, um, I just love, your, love the system you guys taught us. Uh, I think it works beautifully. Uh, I think if, if, t if the team is willing to try it and willing to give it a chance, it's a, it's a slam dunk system that, that, uh, really has everything covered.